All right, real quick, we're gonna talk about Smile 2022. Smile. Well, I don't know why I'm saying the year. This this is the only one that I know of. Uh, <laughs> that's a horror film anyway. So Smile, it comes from director Parker Finn, which I don't know anything else that this director has actually done. Uh, so <laughs> let me check real quick. Okay. Laura Hasn't Slept, The Hide Behind. So it looks like a couple other horror type films. Uh, this will probably be his most notable. And that that's coming from... I'm the type of horror guy that like I like good scares, but I also like good stories being told. And uh, this one, it's got a story it wants to tell. Maybe the delivery isn't all the way there, but uh, I thought it was an okay, adequate horror film that had a message it wanted to tell, but it just it, it falls short a little bit there. The movie's a little bit too long for one. <laughs> when I have moments, I'm in the theater and I'm yawning, not because it's been a long day. I'm just kind of ready for something to be over so I can get on to the next thing or get home, whatever the case. That's kind of what was happening here. Uh, I think there's some there, there's a lot of things in this movie that that do work if they were in other films. Uh, there's a lot of things in this movie that work when it comes to copying other films like The Grudge, The Rain, It Follows. Uh, there's, there's a number of movies that this movie feels like. And so it doesn't really have its own identity. It tries to do that with the smile aspect, like the creepy smile. Uh, my daughter does that to me all the time. It's it's creepy. Uh, <laughs> there's certain horror films that they've done things for just natural everyday things. And uh, like what Jaws did for water. Uh, I would say what Nope did for the sky to a, to a degree. Uh, this movie tries to do that with smiling, but it doesn't really... It's not as effective for me. The movie does have some good scares, though. It has, has a few good scares. They're all jump scares, of course. Uh, and the ending is probably the most notable of the scary moments, uh, at least for me. That's where I kind of feel like, oh, man, this is really where it could amp up. But it's the end of the movie, and that's it's pretty much done. There's a lot of moments where there's scares and certain things are happening, and then it just cuts to a new scene. And the person's fine. They're doing whatever they're doing as far as the main character, Rose played by Saucy Bacon, who is Kevin Bacon and Kira Sidwick's uh, daughter. Didn't know that at first. Saw the last name Bacon. I just, I didn't want to assume. You know what they say about assuming, right? Because when you assume, you make an ass of me. Uh, but she's good in the movie. Uh, Jesse T. Usher is in the movie. He's, he's all right. Uh, <laughs> the acting overall is pretty good. Save for a couple of moments where it just felt like it wasn't real dialogue being spoken between human beings. There were a couple moments of that and I was just like, this feels odd. But the story overall is is told in a creative way. I will give them that. And there's some twists and turns in there as well, which I didn't expect. So that was nice. But if you've seen the trailer, like me, you saw the trailer for this movie, it might mess up your experience watching this film because you might be expecting something that this movie actually is not. This is more of a slow film, not a slow burn. It's just slow. It takes its time. And there's a moment where I kind of forgot I was watching a horror film, too. There, <laughs> uh, it's really focused on trauma, mental illness, um, a lot of different things that are kind of happening here, especially childhood trauma, and how that kind of affects you as you grow older. Uh, there's a lot of aspects of that. I don't want to give anything away because I want you to see this if you think you're up for it. If you're more or less not a newbie to horror, but like anything horror or scary kind of gets with you, you might like this. Again, it is a little bit too slow and it's a little bit too long being like an hour and 45 minutes roughly with credits or hour and 55 minutes with credits, it's still a little bit too long uh, for what it's trying to do. And I think the reason that I didn't care for it as much as I thought I would is because like I said earlier, it feels like movies I've watched before and it goes along its story in the same way. Someone has something happen. They realize it's happening to them now. They go looking for answers. They find answers, sort of. They don't really know how to make things work or, or, or get or get better. And, you know, it just, it's just what it is. Uh, the YouTube channel Double Toasted talked about uh, uh, go, ghost herpes or go, like ghost STD, like, you know, de de demonic STD, kind of like It Follows, kind of like The Ring, same thing with The Grudge, like something has to happen to you and it latches on to you. You have to do something to get it away from you or get it off of you in some cases. Uh, that's kind of what's going on here. So it was actually pretty cool. I got to meet Corey and Martin from Double Toasted, uh, the YouTube channel, Double Toasted. Uh, and uh, so that was pretty cool to see them there. And uh, <laughs> you can check out the review of the movie as well. But um, these are just kind of a few of my thoughts on this one because I feel like there was something better 
that could have happened here. The tone really called for it. Felt very much like a Japanese horror style film, but in a good way. Not like The Grudge or even the um, like the 2021 or the one with Sarah Michelle Gellar. Like, even though that's a good one. That's a good one. And that's better than the 2020 version of The Grudge. But uh, yeah, yeah, this one, it's it still falls short a little bit for me. Would I watch it again, though? Probably. I'd probably fast forward through a few parts, though, because there's some slow, slow moments. But it's really about a descent into madness. And that's what makes it work overall. But there's just some aspects to this movie that didn't work for me. And that's mainly the pacing, uh, mainly the, the, the cliche-ness of the story and how it just feels like other things. It doesn't really have its own identity, even with the weird smiling. Just didn't really work all that much for me. But uh, it was good to be in a theater full of people watching the movie. It seemed like some people really enjoyed it. It scared a lot of people. That I always love. So I think a theater experience for this is pretty good, even with the slow moments. It's actually all right. But this could also work very well as a streaming watch, just watching it at home. So it's, <laughs> I leave it to you. Let me know where you stand. Are you going to watch it in theaters if you want to see something horror related? Or are you going to wait until streaming and watch it at home? I still have to watch Barbarian. I gotta check that out. I mean, I'm in horror mode now. So that this, this kind of started it for me because it's, it's some, there's some good scares in here. Uh, but I gotta watch Barbarian. I know there's a few others coming. We got, uh, <clears throat> We've got the Werewolf by Night special from Disney Plus that's going to be on, you know, streaming, obviously. But we got like a number of things that are coming down the pipe. So I'm excited. And uh, this kind of starts the, the horror watching party for me a little bit here. So let me know your thoughts, as always, in the comments below uh, if you're going to check this out. And uh, if you have seen it, let me know your thoughts as far as what you thought of the movie and what you thought of, of the entity that was uh, messing with Rose here. I'd like your thoughts on that too. Members, subscribers, watchers, thanks so much for supporting the channel any way that you do. I really appreciate it. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.